Hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite topics in supply chain strategy, and that's postponement. I think a postponement is one of the most powerful levers managers can use in a supply chain, and something that you should know how and when to implement. So what is postponement? Well, consider the root word. In general, postpone refers to de delaying or deferring something to a later time. And that's exactly what postponement does in a supply chain context. Postponement refers to delaying the final form or placement of a product until a demand signal is received. This capability is very powerful and it is essential to supply chain strategies that address demand uncertainty. The original concept of postponement was made popular a few decades ago by a Harvard Business Review article on Hewlett Packard. HP had a problem. They sold copiers in both the United States and Europe. And though the copiers were the same, power sources in these two regions of the world were a little different. Therefore, they made copiers for the US and copiers for Europe. So they had to manage two separate pools of inventory. But by doing this, they had ongoing problems with having too much inventory of one type of copier and then not enough of the other type. Sometimes they'd be out of stock on US copiers and have too many European copiers. Likewise, there would be times when they had too much inventory of either US or European models. This caused all kinds of problems with lower service levels and higher inventory carrying costs. The complexity of dealing with multiple pools of inventory was not being well managed and the supply chain was not providing acceptable levels of cost or service. Something needed to change. What HP realized was that the copiers were essentially the same. The only difference between the products was the power cords. So rather than building machines with a specific power cord attached, they began to postpone or delay the final form of the product by manufacturing copiers without power cords. That way, the copiers were not yet differentiated. When an order came in for US copiers, then the cords were installed or included. When an order came in for European copiers, then the European cords were installed or included. This simple process change made postponement a reality for HP, and it had a positive effect on performance. Service improved dramatically because HP was now in stock on copiers and could fulfill orders from one pool of inventory that was much easier to manage. The process was less complex, and overall inventory levels declined because one pool of copier inventory was smaller than the previously combined US and European inventory levels. As a result, inventory carrying costs and lost sales costs both decreased. This was a big win and changed supply chain management forever. As the concept of postponement has evolved, it has been extended to multiple areas within the supply chain. We now see postponement being implemented in manufacturing and assembly, labeling and packaging, and time. Let's talk about each of these types of postponement. First, we'll begin with manufacturing and assembly. The HP story is just one example of delaying the final manufacturing or assembly of a product. But there are plenty of other instances where the final form of a product is customized to an actual customer order. Think about buying paint. You can choose from an unlimited color assortment, and once you make your selection, an employee simply grabs a gallon of white base paint. Then a computerized machine adds tints to the paint and mixes it to achieve the final color. In the past, stores only carried a few basic colors that required a lot of space to keep in stock. But now, customers can choose any color from stores with less inventory and space requirements and have their customized order almost instantaneously filled. Postponement can also apply to labeling and packaging. With this approach, the final product is assembled, but the final labeling or packaging is not put on until a firm customer order is received. For example, once a tuna fish company sold the same mix of tuna in the same size can under multiple brands to various retailers. The company had the same problem as Hewlett Packard. They attempted to manage multiple pools of inventory for different customers, and this resulted in high levels of inventory and low levels of service. When they implemented labeling postponement, they were able to reduce inventory and improve service by simply waiting for retail orders to arrive before they labeled their cans of tuna. 
Now finally, let's take a look at time postponement. This postponement has nothing to do with the form of a product. Instead, this type of postponement delays the final location of a product until a firm customer order is received. You often see time postponement used with very expensive products that cannot be stocked at multiple locations because it's cost prohibitive. For example, Lowe's sells high-end refrigerators that cost over 10 grand. Although there are a few stores in very high-end markets that might keep this item in stock, the majority of the stores do not carry this item. However, all Lowe's stores do offer this item for sale by using time postponement. Lowe's always keeps a few of these refrigerators in the distribution center. So, if a customer is crazy enough to buy a $10,000 refrigerator, they will ship it out the next day. Due to the expense and nature of this item, customers are accustomed to waiting a day or two for delivery. But think about what would happen if time postponement was not used here. What if all 100 stores within a distribution center service area had to stock one or two of these items? That mini network would have at least 100 units of $10,000 refrigerators on hand. That's a lot of inventory to carry to support just a few sporadic sales. But by using time postponement, Lowe's can keep a few of these units on hand in the distribution center and still capture the same sales volume. It's a win-win situation. Customers still get a broader range of product selection and Lowe's sells the same amount with a fraction of the inventory investment, thus making inventory turnover and return on assets soar through the roof. These examples are meaningful and provide insights into the power of postponement. But let's review why, as a manager, you might use postponement. What are the high-level benefits of postponement capabilities? From a supply chain perspective, postponement is amazing because it simultaneously reduces costs and improves service. Let me say that again. It simultaneously reduces costs and improves service. Think about that for a moment. It typically takes increased costs to improve service because nothing is free. But postponement violates this basic supply chain relationship with a simple process change. And that's the true power of postponement. It reverses in an advantageous way one of the most basic relationships in supply chain management. That's the relationship between cost and service. This is powerful, powerful stuff. But the benefits of postponement do not stop with supply chain concerns. From a marketing perspective, postponement is also very powerful because it increases product selection options for consumers and in many cases, infinitely expands the product category. Think about the paint example of form postponement. Is there a paint color that you could not purchase? Any color under the rainbow is now available to anyone at any time. And this type of mass customization is available on a large scale for individual consumer preferences. Again, powerful stuff. So postponement sounds like a magical cure-all. Should we use it all the time in our supply chains? And unfortunately not. Postponement is only viable under certain conditions. From a process perspective, you need to have at least one of the following characteristics. First, your product needs to have modular design that enables customization without too much complexity. Think about the original HP example. If a highly trained technician had to spend hours taking apart the whole copier to install a US or European power cord, then it'd be cost prohibitive to postpone However, if you have a modular design and simply have the consumer plug the proper cord into the copier at the final destination, then it's easy to implement. The second type of process characteristic needed for postponement is that it must be feasible to decouple the primary and postponed operations. By decoupling, I mean separate or disengage. For example, think about paint. If we physically could not separate the dye coloring from the actual paint, then it would be impossible to postpone. However, because we can, then we can mix in customized colors after the paint is already produced. There are also key product characteristics that tend to lend themselves to potential postponement. First, products with high value to density ratios. In other words, things that are relatively small but expensive. 
These may be candidates for postponement because the postponing operations themselves do incur some expense, like the paint machine costs money. So the inventory reduction from postponement needs to be more than offset by the cost of postponement. If a gallon of paint only costs three cents, then it would be silly to postpone because the mixing machine would be more expensive than the inventory carrying cost savings. However, since paint costs $30 to $80 a gallon, the inventory savings are substantial relative to the cost of postponement. The second process characteristic to consider when making a postponement decision deals with physical dimensions of the product. If a product gains cube or weight throughout the production and customization process, then it might be a good candidate for postponement. Soda at a restaurant is a good example. Soda starts with a sugary flavored syrup and then carbonated water is added to the syrup. So the weight of the product increases through the manufacturing process. Fountain soda machines take advantage of this product characteristic along with readily available water supplies in most areas. Fountain machines simply have to stay in stock on syrup flavors and carbonation, but they also rely on local water sources to mix together components at the last minute and provide customized selection of flavors. At the same time, transportation costs are reduced because water does not have to be shipped. This is why fountain sodas are so much cheaper than bottled sodas. In this example, customers get better in-stock levels on customized products and organizations save money on transportation and inventory carrying costs. Again, another powerful win-win opportunity with postponement. In terms of market characteristics, postponement is often considered with short product lifecycle products that have unpredictable demand with a variety of markets and customers. All this variation and uncertainty makes delaying the final form or location of a product quite necessary. Without postponement, we would struggle to meet these unique, uncertain conditions without incurring massive costs in safety stock inventory, obsolescence, or markdowns. If these uncertain and diverse market conditions did not exist, meaning that we have longer product life cycles and more predictable, stable demand, then there would be no reason to incur the costs of postponement. Quite simply, we can plan and optimize everything with a very efficient approach. However, the reality is that certain markets make optimization difficult, but do lend themselves to potential postponement, especially when key suppliers have short and reliable lead times. As I've alluded to, there are trade-offs associated with postponement. Although there can certainly be benefits in terms of inventory reduction, increased service, and reduced markdown or obsolescence costs, and potential overall reduction in lost sales, these benefits do come at a cost. Postponement capabilities are not free. Equipment like paint mixing machines or fountain soda machines cost money. Delaying the final assembly or labeling of a product adds some time, space, and cost requirements to manufacturing or distribution processes. Postponement only makes sense to implement when the cost reductions outweigh the cost increases. When they do, the benefits are tremendous, especially in less quantifiable concepts like customer satisfaction and loyalty. So from a strategic standpoint, why as supply chain managers do we care about postponement? Postponement is a capability that helps address demand uncertainty, and it is a key enabler of responsive or agile supply chain strategies. Without postponement capabilities, organizations would be unable to effectively implement responsive or agile approaches to their supply chains. I hope as a future supply chain manager that you enjoy postponement as much as I do. <music>